Hello everyone, we are today here at the Military History Museum of the Bundeswehr in Dresden and this is Magnus Pahl. Hello. Who curated the exhibition on the Fallschirmjäger and the question we have today are the Green Devils, the Fallschirmjäger overestimated or not? Because quite often what I've seen is that they are portrayed as elite warriors that were extremely strong at Monte Cassino and other places. But it seems that doesn't hold up if one looks closer at the documents. And for this, I think we start basically in 1940, because there was the first major use of the Fallschirmjäger during the campaign in the West and also Norway. So most famously known is probably Fort Eben Amal. That yes. worked quite well as far as yes. I know. Yes, Fort Eben Amal in Belgium, uh, it worked very well. But of course, you have to make differences because Fort Eben Emal was a command raid with gliders, not with parachute. And um, there was a small detachment, the so-called Sturmabteilung Koch. It was named after the leader of, of this battalion. And um, they used, for the first time in military history, a glider, which was towed by um, transport aircraft, uh, Junkers U. 52, mostly, and um, they, um, they planned this operation very detailed. And even Hitler himself was part uh, of the team which was planning the, the, um, the operation against Eben Emal because they thought it's a decisive mission, decisive operation, and so the highest commander, if you want so, was part of the planning group. And they used for the first time the glider for this command raid. And they used a special so-called Haftrollladung. Yeah. Not, not Haftrollladung, Rollladung, more Roller Rollladung, charge, yeah. not, not Haft, Rollladung. For the first time to uh, destroy the strong fortifications um, at Eben Emal, the bunkers. And that went more or less according to plan. But it was a successful operation. They uh, captured um, Fort Eben Emal with only a few casualties, were, were relieved from, from advancing German uh, engineers uh, of the hair. And so it was a successful operation. And um, some other operations also functioned uh, according to plan. They captured a few bridges. Um, over important rivers, uh, and that was the idea behind to save uh, bridgeheads for, um, um, for the link up with the advancing uh, German panzer troops. So, and uh, that, that uh, worked quite well in, in Belgium. And which operations failed and or were less yes. successful? And the second um, um, target or high valuable target. Um, was the capture of the government district of the Netherlands in the Haag, in Den Haag. And the idea was um, to um, make a parachute mission and capture the airfields in the area. And after capturing the airfields to fly in um, other infantry from the army, the so-called uh, second two infantry division, airborne division, Luftlande division. Uh, with transport aircraft after capturing uh, all those different um, um, yeah, Dutch thanks. airfields. And that um, worked not according to plan at some places. And uh, from Falschemiger Regiment 2, Falschemiger Regiment 2, um, a lot, a lot of uh, them had to, uh, even to, um, to capitulate. So they were surrendered and, 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 uh, and were taken prisoners. Yes, and were taken prisoners and were even brought to England, so in 1940. So it was, of course, overshadowed in a positive light uh, by Eben Emal and the successful operations against uh, some bridges. But um, the other part, the capture of, um, of the government district, uh, uh, of the Dutch capital, that uh, did not work. And in, during Weser Übung, which was chronically before, there were also some problems? Yes, there were also some problems uh, uh, during Weser Übung. Um, but uh, I think it was um, nearly the same uh, because uh, you, you had, uh, in the end, uh, they succeeded in Denmark and in Norway. 
and they were able to relieve Navig, especially Navig, and uh, fly in um, Gebirgsjäger mountain troops, um, which were hastily trained in parachute, uh, parachute missions and jump missions. And that was again, I think, this, uh, nearly the same, uh, the same way of, of things uh, happened because you could always say, okay, we captured uh, Navig, and all in all, it was a success. And so, first, um, I think um, operations that failed on a company level, on small, smaller levels, um, would, could be uh, easily covered with the successes. But um, there is a link also between the jump missions in Scandinavia, which took uh, place quite weeks before um, the invasion uh, in, in, in the Netherlands and Belgium. Um, and the Dutch, uh, especially the Dutch forces, um, were able to, um, to, to um, watch at the German um, techniques, methods, combat methods of the new parachute troops and knew, okay, their doctrine. They knew, okay, Germans try, mostly they try to uh, capture the airfield and then the, the airplanes uh, come with, with a regular with reinforcements, re reinforcement supply, and so on and so on. And it was it was um, it was crucial. It was most important to capture the airfields, because otherwise uh, you uh, were not able to get the reinforcements, and they were of course absolutely necessary. And uh, the Dutch, especially the Dutch, um, yeah, learned a lot from the Scan Scandinavian campaign, and deployed their defensive weapons and forces around the airfields. And that was one of the reasons why uh, things uh, did not work out so, so proper. Um, because the surprise effect was lost. Beca uh, exactly, because the surprise effect, and that is essential for every airborne uh, operation, um, that was not there, was not, the, 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 yeah, was not there in, in the Netherlands. Um, and so they, they uh, suffered uh, casualties. So fast forward to Greek from what I read in your article, the planning, the, I think three regiments uh, set out in Greek, uh, in, in Crete, not Greek, that's kind of related. And, and the, the plans differed. There were two regiments, I think, which were mainly deployed directly and into the, the midst of the battle. Yes. And one was mainly the short assemble outside and then make a combined attack. Yes. And your thesis, I think, is that this was due to the, the training standards of one of the regiments in comparison to the other two. Yes, uh, exactly. Um, in, in 1941, uh, you had one um, parachute division, the so-called Siemte Flieger Division. That was a cover name, 7th... Uh, Air, airplane division yeah, or, yeah, or, or pilot could, division, Flieger yeah. is technically the pilot. Yeah, the so pilot division it was a, a cover name, but uh, in, in, uh, in the core, it was, it was actually it was um, a parachute division, and later it was renamed in uh, and, and first Falsch Mega division. And this division comprised three regiments, first, second, and third, very easy uh, because they were um, there were no other regiments, so they could use one, two, three. And additionally, they had uh, the so-called assault regiment, the Sturmregiment, and that was the former Sturmabteilung Koch. Huh? They, so they took this battalion yeah. and, 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 and grew and became a regiment on a regiment uh, size. And, and um, the Sturmregiment, the Assault Regiment, used parts of it used gliders as well. As one year before, in May 1940, they used the glider, the Lastensegler, originally. And they tried uh, to capture or to destroy, better, better to say, to destroy the anti-aircraft defense around the airfields. But in Crete, in May 1941, May 1941, you have had the difficulty that, uh, of course, the defenders, the Allied defenders, knew the German methods very well because 
they were able to make analysis about the Dutch campaign and campaign in the West and in the North. And so they deployed their forces around the airfields. And uh, in the core, uh, basically, you had three different airfields, which were all deployed in the north of Crete. And for every airfield, the Germans, um, uh, yes, um, uh, att attacked with, with one uh, regiment each to capture the airfield and the nearby city, if you want so. And one, um, one um, different case is one regiment which was um, um, deployed and, and uh, which um, had the, the task, the mission, to, um, to land not directly uh, in the airfield area, but uh, on, on, a, on a plane, plane? Play, um, even a plane field, yeah. A pl more or less plane field. And after landing, regrouping, they uh, uh, were, um, or they were um, earmarked to, to attack in a more or less traditional infantry attack. Um, geschlossen. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. I, I wrote one page on how to translate geschlossen yes. Einsatz. Not, not in small units, uh, I, I tried to, to explain it, not in small units like the, the other ones at the platoon level or company level, but as in, in battalions, formed as battalions and, and as a regiment. And to and attack, to attack uh, as a regiment and not as a platoon or a company on a bigger, bigger unit level. So uh, that was the plan. And um, I think um, the reason behind is, um, you mentioned the thesis, uh, this regiment was the so-called Falsche Mega Regiment 3, Parachute Regiment uh, 3. And um, it was recruited more or less uh, from officers and even NCOs from the army originally with a good infantry um, training and, and they, they were, of course, they were inf infantry men. Um, so, and came from the army. And the three other regiments, uh, which were uh, attacking uh, the airfields more or less directly, uh, uh, coming down to earth uh, in the area of the airfields, they were from the Air Force, from the Luftwaffe. So, and they were considered uh, not to be as good as the ones from the army uh, due to, uh, to the different origin. Huh? And lack of training in, in regards to infantry combat on a, on, a, on a higher level. On a higher level, yes. They were more designed uh, to, yes, uh, to, to, to fight like um, uh, in the even EMA case in command raids or in small units to destroy certain objectives, targets, and not, not on, a, on, a greater, on a greater unit. Okay, huh? yeah. I mean, generally, if one looks at 1939, uh, after Poland, the German general staff for the army was not very happy with the performance in some regards, and they did major retraining, I think mostly on battalion level, but they realized that some of the of their officers could not perform combined arms warfare and other aspects. On, on, a, on such a scale sometimes. And this is probably related to death as well, that it, with, with the traditional army unit at that point, it was quite well suited, but for the, for the Fajimi, it was not the case. Of course, because it's also in, initially a smaller unit and the training, the jump training, as far as I know, requires a lot of time at that point as well. Yes, it's right. And, and you always uh, have to be in mind that um, from the 100,000 men of the Reichswehr before 1933, 35, um, there was um, uh, growing up in forces up to 25, um, ah, 20, um, 25 times. 20, of course, 25 times. So, and it was even a big problem, of course, for the army, for the traditional army, uh, to create the new units with experienced and trained personnel, of course. 
And um, so uh, there were some um, there were some some things uh, which went not in a, in, a, in a positive or a good way even in the in the campaign against uh, the Polish army in, yeah. in 39. But uh, the big difference is that the origins are different um, because the army uh, was able to um, they had the backbone you can say so of personnel from the old Reichswehr, the officers and the NCOs. And uh, the parachute uh, officers recruited most of them from the so-called Wecker Abteilung from the regiment General Göring. And they were often regarded as second-rate officers because they were former police officers who did not receive the proper uh, keen training uh, as the Reichswehr officers. And so that was one reason because the hair, the army was... Uh, always a little bit jealous on the one hand, and on the other hand, a little bit cautious or skeptical about the performance of the parachute troops, because they thought, okay, those guys were mostly not at the, in the Reichswehr, um, not regarded as good as us, as army officers. And so there was some kind of mistrust, even in the early stages of the war, and especially uh, during the uh, mentioned campaign in uh, the, the Netherlands, in Belgium, in 1940, um, there was a lot, um, there were lots of U-52 planes destroyed by, by anti-aircraft fire, uh, over 200 uh, U-52. And so you also had a lot of uh, critical voices inside the Air Force too, because they thought, okay, our uh, aircraft uh, transport capabilities are very crucial, very important, of course. Right? It was the former Lufthansa, um, the transport um, um, fleet, if you yeah. want so. And they were also used for training. For, for, for uh, you know, uh, and so on. And um, more or less, maybe the half of them were destroyed in 1940. And uh, in, in Crete, uh, the year, uh, the year uh, afterwards, later, yeah. afterwards um, also uh, over 200 U-52. And that was a very big number of, of, um, of valuable um, and, uh, transport aircraft. So to be clear for, for some people that m might not know this now, one could regard this from the army as jealousy or inter-service rivalry, but if you look at the 100,000 man army, every officer in that army was handpicked and every soldier in there. So Germany went after the First World War, I don't know how many, they had a few million men, and then only the best of the best were chosen, like Rommel, Guderian, and many others. These were especially trained and yeah, handpicked, so there's quite a difference, and those people who didn't sometimes make it into the army went often to the police officer or others as well. And then you had like also the political part of the Falsch Mir, the original part. One original part was like Göring's uh, bodyguard, yeah. and they were of course also the, the army had I think some units test uh, trial troops or something. They also were integrated. So now, now the question is, during Crete, of course. Since the Allies knew everything and, and where they were coming and defended against this and was to a certain degree um, able to, to counter the surprise or basically the surprise didn't happen, one would argue, well, then the paratroopers must be especially combat effective because they won. So, so, so what happened in Crete? Yeah, in Crete, um, uh, what happened in Crete? In Crete, um, on the 20th May, 1941, um, those four paratroop um, regiments attacked in two waves because uh, they used around about 500 U-52 and um, that was enough for only in the first wave two regiments more or less. And um, they attacked and tried to gain um, at least one of the airfields in the north. And, um, and the, the regiment, uh, which, which was landing at the plane um, um, in the vicinity of the capital, um, those, those were the four regiments. And um, on the first day, uh, it was near to a debacle. 
because not one of the airfields was captured by the paratroopers. And the paratroopers had a very, very big advantage because the Germans had the air superiority. Um, the Allied had uh, the naval superiority, so the Germans were not able to reinforce their troops at Crete uh, by seaborne. It was uh, only one, one week after heavy fighting that they were able to bring uh, single ships and so on to the coast to, to, greet, to Crete, but it was not possible during the first days. They made an attempt, but um, that was, was, um, was defended by, Crete was defended by the British Navy. In one year, yeah. And so um, that was not possible to, to go through it. And the Germans, and that's, um, I think that's unique, that, that was of course unique at that time, that for the first time in military history, um, the Germans capture a whole island on an operational level only by airborne forces. That was new, and that make it uh, interesting for paratroopers even uh, today, of course, uh, as, a, as a special yeah. case. Uh? And, and um, so the, the big advantage was uh, the air superiority, and the Germans had the so-called Achtes Flieger Corps, eight um, Air Force Corps. Yeah, Air Corps, yeah. And it was also called the Close Combat Corps of the, of the Air Force, because all the U87, the Stuka, the famous Stuka dive bomber, Sturzkampf bomber, was more or less, most of them were, um, were in, in this special core. And they gave direct, as flying artillery, if you want so, they gave direct uh, support um, from, the, from the very beginning and even before, of course, in bombing um, the, the Allied uh, positions. As, as far as I know, uh, I, I will put the quote in, uh, down below. A uh, Fennel reported on this. You know, he wrote the, the, about the British Army and Commonwealth forces in the Second World War. And he noted that this air superiority had a, a, an extreme effect on the moral of the Allied troops. It has one special case where, where he actually lists the losses and there were basically, I think, one or two men, as, as mentioned will be below, while basically the combat effectiveness of the, of the unit broke completely down. And, and this is a, of, of huge importance here that the air superiority ma made a major aspect here and might have saved the operation. And also Gebirgsieger mountain troops were brought in as well. Yes, exactly. And, and uh, we have a lot of uh, sources uh, from contemporary witnesses uh, who said, okay, the German Air Force, that was terrible for us in our positions, uh, the dive bombers, the Zerstörer, destroyer, me 100, uh, 110, 10, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also um, the, the fighter planes, which uh, were make their strafing operations there and so on and so on. And so we have, um, we have it from both sides, from sources from both sides. From the Allied per perspective, uh, there are a lot of sources uh, which say, say exactly this. And also from, from German sources that they say, okay, that was our flying uh, artillery. And especially the, the Stukas um, were called the Fallschirm artillery. So because the parachute uh, troops um, did not have as much uh, heavy weapons, which means Mortars, mostly the 81 millimeter mortar that was their, um, their equipment, um, heavy machine guns, uh, but also the first uh, light geschütze were used at Crete, um, the recoilless guns. Recoilless guns, yeah. Um, yeah. Brought in by, by parachute. And, um, and, and, and to, to balance it, um, to, to give them the support of artillery, they used the 8 Flieger Corps. And more or less, there, as, as I think most, mostly uh, in, 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 in every war, uh, the Germans had the so-called Kriegsglück. They had good luck because um, at one of those airfields at Malem, that was one of the airfields uh, which is uh, mostly uh, in, in, the, no, in, the, wow. in the west, And um, there was one battalion, New Zealanders, uh, and the battalion commander was not able to, to phone or to, to radio to, to his superiors. 
and he decided because he, he uh, get, uh, no, no, uh, got no reinforcements, he decided in the, uh, during the night of the first combat battle day uh, to withdraw. And there was one decisive fight, uh, Hill 107, and that was, was, um, was crucial, uh, was a key position um, to defend uh, the Malem airport, and he withdrew. And so the Germans were able on the second day of the attack, on the 21st, to get in the first reinforcements uh, of the mountain troopers. Um, under artillery fire, there was still artillery fire on Malem Airport, but anyhow, uh, the Gebirgsega landed and reinforced uh, the parachute, uh, paratroopers. And so, um, so uh, the Germans um, became stronger and stronger by, by every day, you can say so. And, and afterwards, I think you mentioned some reports, there was some critique inside the German forces that some, some aspects did not work out in the battle. As, as far as I remember, the, the, the combat morale of the Fajim was very high of the individual yeah. fighters, yeah. but like the, the unit uh, on, the, on the higher command level or well, mid-level, there, there were certain problems. Is this correct? Yes, that's, that's correct. Um, we found some uh, memoirs and, and, um, and sources from um, ordinary paratroopers, from, um, from Unteroffiziere, uh, NCOs, NCOs, and Unteroffiziere and Mannschaften, also ordinary and enlisted men, men, enlisted men. And um, they complained that they are, in one case, that the battalion commander and the commander of the regiment, were not able to conduct um, geschlossenen in, in ordinary um, regular infantry attack. Yeah. So that came from, from, from down to, to top, if you want, so from the, from the grassroots, so the critics. And also from above, there were also uh, a lot of critics uh, inside the German army. Uh, especially from the 12th uh, Army, that was the army which uh, captured Greek, the, the mainland of Greek, and uh, they had their, their uh, staff uh, at Athens, and of course um, they, they, um, they, they were not in charge, but of course at, as observers they always made their comments and were very critical of course, and thought, okay, we would have been better in doing this and that and so on and so on. And, that, uh, and, and therefore, you had uh, both levels from, from criti critics uh, from, from, below. from below and from above. And from above, uh, one of the most uh, critical Air Force officers uh, was the commander of the 8th Flieger Corps, the Nahkampf Corps, which uh, supported, as mentioned, um, the attack on the ground, General von Richthofen. And Richthofen was, I think, uh, also in some kind, uh, in some ways, a special Air Force officer because he gained combat experiences as the leader of Legion Condor in the Spanish Civil War. And um, in this role, before the outbreak of World War II, um, he uh, was the leader of Air Force troops as well of, uh, as uh, ground troops. Mm, okay. Even tank troops were tested there yeah. in, in Gadrone. And I think uh, he was one of those uh, officers uh, who was capable and able to make a proper judgment, maybe. And he criticized the, the paratroopers in a very hard way, I would say. Uh, even um, one, uh, two years before in, in Poland, in the Polish campaign, there were some uh, paratroopers uh, on, in an infantry role, not in an airborne role, engaged in... in um, in regular infantry fighting, suffered a few casualties. And in his, uh, with the eyes of Richthofen, they were not very disciplined and did not behave in, in, um, in a way which, in his eyes, a German uh, soldier should behave in combat. So it's, it's very, generally very often important for German soldiers to conduct themselves properly. Sometimes man, man, man is zucht. I like it. Yes, that, exactly. That is the, the key word, this is an old German word for discipline and usually um, I think mostly used outside of combat if I'm not mistaken. Yes, but the paratroopers, um, you know, that's only I think it, it teases. Uh, the paratroopers were trained um, to, to take everything after they land 
in, in the enemy's hinterland, rear area, to take everything out of the land, especially, I don't know, supplies. of course, of co supplies, of course, they, they had no, no, no trucks with, with them uh, after landing with the parachute, and so they were trained uh, to get whatever they, they, they find in the area. Uh, for example, mules, as in Crete, 1941, donkeys, or cars, um, everything to be mobile, for example, or everything, uh, food, uh, which was crucial, of course, to get it, um, fuel, um, weapons, captured weapons, ammunition, everything. Yeah, to to to, uh, to forage the country yes. basically. Yeah, and I think that was maybe that's uh, a certain clue uh, to, for for better understanding, because um, because um, that was their training to get everything and the, and the mindset as well probably and the mindset maybe even after the airborne uh, operations uh, were cut off in after forty one after Crete. Um, uh, this mindset was was still the same, and um, and they even sometimes they even uh, organized organization that was was an euphemism yeah euphemism an euphemism to organize means yeah it, get to, something whatever way possible <laughs> or to steal so yeah whatever way possible. <laughs> Keep it simple to steer. Um, and um, they organized um, uh, things from, from other parachute units. Or one or company or from another or one battalion from another. And the, oh no, even from the army. And from the army as well, of course. Um, but, but even uh, from, from their own um, branch of arms or for, from their own um, uh, Waffengattung, uh, from, from the paratroops to paratroops. And I found a source, uh, it was published in 1944, and it was described there that they've stolen things, <laughs> captured things from, from, from the, a neighboring uh, unit. And that was, of course, new to me because I thought, okay, um, from the enemy, of course. Uh, yeah. And maybe also from, from different army uh, units. Uh, of course, yeah, maybe on a smaller scale, but not each other. But, but that was the case in Crete in, in May 1941, according to the source. No, oh, it's quite extreme. Yeah. So um, we probably have also have to discuss Monte Cassino a bit now uh, when it comes to combat effectiveness, because this is usually, besides Crete, the most likely, probably best known example, especially since at Monte Cassino there were a lot of different nations fighting over there. Yes. I mean, it's it's four battles for the Allies, for the Germans. It's it's three battles, yeah. by the way. It's yeah. a bit complicated, and so. For, for basically how it often portrayed that a handful of paratroopers defended the, the abbey, and actually it was the abbey and the, and the, the town itself, yeah. and against an, a large amount of, of allied troops. So how much does this hold up to scrutiny now? Um, yeah, you have to draw the, the broader picture a little bit. I, I try to, to, to keep it short, but uh, you, uh, otherwise it does not work to explain it. Um, you know, after Crete, um, shortly after Crete in May 1941, in June, second, uh, 22nd June 41, Barbarossa, yeah. Uh, yeah, Barbarossa took place, um, the attack on, against the Soviet Union. And uh, in December 1941, um, the, the, the Germany was uh, in, war, in the war with, with uh, the United States. And so, after Crete, on an operational tactical level, Hitler decided, okay, the moment of surprise for paratroop uh, attacks, paratroopers' attacks is over because they knew our doctrine very well, so that proved Crete, and so he was not willing um, to use the parachute troops uh, in quite the same strengths uh, with more than 10,000 uh, paratroopers. And he said, okay, no, um, maybe for, for commando raids and so on and so on, we, we should keep the ability, but on a relatively small number. And after, um, after the declaration of war against the, the United States in December 1941, Germany was in war against three empires, you can say so. The British Empire, including, I don't know, India, K 
Canada, Australia, and so on and so on. So the United States, very strong, of course, in, in, in the industrial um, um, mine, yeah. mine and so on and so on, and the Soviet Union. And um, of course, the Germans tried uh, to, to, um, yeah, to, to, to defeat the, the Red Army, like in the so-called Blitzkriege um, in 1939 and 1940, but they were, were not able to do so. Uh, the Red Army stopped them uh, in front of uh, Moscow in December 41. And so the balance was, it was more and more outbalanced because the Germans had only more or less weak allies. Japanese were strong, okay, but the Italian... On the naval side, yeah. Uh, on the naval side, the Italians were not strong. Um, uh, and, and I think in all branches, the Navy was... Quite strong, but there was Quite a few strong. problem and all yes, the other issues. Against uh, the Navy, it was uh, not very strong, the British Navy. And, and uh, the allies from, from the Balkan states were also not very, very powerful. So the Germans had the problem that their quantity was, of course, in, 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 in every sense, uh, lower than those of the anti-Hitler coalition. Yeah, they were outmatched outmatched in personnel, in material, in raw materials, in every case. And so the only, I think, the only possibility for, for the regime um, to, to keep the moral high on a high level for the German population and for the weak uh, allies of the German Reich was to say, okay, we are, of course, everyone could see it on the globe, we are weaker in numbers, but we have the better tanks and, of course, the better human beings. And that was uh, intermixed mixed together with, with the ideological thinking because uh, National Socialists believed that they were part of the so-called master race, the Herrenrasse, and the Nordic race, and so on and so on, all those, those um, those uh, theories of basically the 19th century. And um, so they, they, they uh, draw the picture and the propaganda to say, okay, we are outnumbered, we, are, we have smaller numbers, but we have the better fighter. And they especially used uh, the attractive uh, parts of the Wehrmacht and the Waffen-SS and said, here, here, look, those men, those guys, uh, the young and, and tough fighters that, that are our heroes, and they will defeat even a higher number of, uh, of our enemies. enemies. Yeah. And um, in, in regarding this, or bearing this in mind, you can see that Casino was some kind of, of uh, case, or some kind of case study for this thinking, because in Casino, you defended south of Rome, you've defended the Italian capital, Rome, um, and it was uh, in the winter and, and springtime of 1944, and the terrain in Italy, it's a mountainous terrain, favored the defender, favored the Germans, because for the Allied it was not uh, possible to Bring out, uh, bring all their their their, their firepower, their material, firepower with tanks, with with even with the air force, with artillery, um, and into combat. And and so it was uh, chosen, especially there in in, in this key position. Um, and they used um, the, the paratroopers, which were closely, um, yes, which were closely uh, um, related also to the regime. As we discussed in, yeah. in, uh, in the beginning, in the yeah. beginning, yeah. So and so, um, the propaganda uh, always tried to enhance, uh, especially the paratroopers. Also, of course, there were lots of uh, other army units fighting in the casino area. For example, the 15th Panzer Grenadier Division, 15th Panzer Grenadier Division, the uh, Fifth uh, Gebirgs uh, Division mountain division, neighboring units, and all fighting uh, in, in the area of casino, but they concentrate uh, on the paratroopers. And of course, in, 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 in propaganda terms, terms of propaganda, you 
um, to, to make a good propaganda, an effective propaganda, you have um, a, a reality, a, a, a core yeah, with, with, uh, with, with reality, good fighters, for example, like the paratroopers, of course, they were good infantrymen. So, but um, they, um, um, yeah, they, they, um, they exaggerate, the, the the, yeah. exaggerate um, dramatically and um, draw the picture of even superhuman soldiers. So, and this picture, uh, I think that was uh, transported especially in the so-called Wochenschau, in the newsreel, German newsreel, which was um, published or was, was shown uh, once a week, Woche, a week. And it was previewed by Hitler usually. It was not only previewed, it was previewed by Hitler and Goebbels, the propaganda minister, and also they um, made last uh, co corrections and, and exactly. And uh, the Wochenschau uh, de described what the high high level <laughs> high level regime uh, leaders Hitler, Goebbels, Göring wanted um, to say wanted wanted uh, that the people think about the, the fighting in in in, uh, in at all fronts. So and 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 to a certain degree, this this uh, propaganda picture also was taken over post-war in, in certain ways as well, that the paratroopers are sometimes shown as, as super soldiers to a certain degree, or not, not just good fighters, but way above that level. Yeah, I think so. And uh, for this special uh, case, um, it, was, it, it had uh, s s some more effects because, uh, you know, at this time at the Eastern Front, the whole army, the 17th army, uh, fighting at the Crimean Peninsula, uh, Krim, uh, was fighting for survival. It was a big debacle. A lot of uh, troops from the 17th army were captured or destroyed by the Red Army at the same time. So, And, um, of course, it was possible um, to concentrate on casino, and you could uh, tell the, the, the population, oh, here we, we have some great victories in the south. Uh, only to to um, uh, mitigate the effect of the of the loss on the Eastern Front. Exactly. And uh, regarding to the West, the Germans expected the invasion of Northern France in, in spring '44, and um, that was um, that was why the Italian campaign up to June 1944, up to the invasion D-Day. Um, became or was so crucial for the Germans as well because Hitler had uh, the hope um, that after the Allies losses a lot of troops during the battles in Italy, for example in Cassino or in Anzio Natuno, um, they probably would even postpone the invasion. That was uh, some kind of hope. It was not very realistic maybe. Uh, you can discuss it. But, but that was the hope of, of the regime, and we, we knew that from, uh, from sources like the Goebbels diary, um, he, he wrote, wrote that down, no? that there were the hopes, okay, um, the fighting in the south is also important for the fighting in, in the west. And of course, on an operational level, they tried to fix, to bind as many allied forces in Italy as possible, because the thinking was, okay, they will not be uh, in, in, in northern fr uh, France uh, after D-Day. Okay. Oh. Anything else to add? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot of stuff. I, I don't know. I don't think so. So uh, basically, to sum it up, Green Devils were good fighters for the most part. There were some leadership problems, especially early on, which also had the army, and they likely fixed it earlier, but then the army also had a had a bigger or different uh, personal background, manpower. And then, of course, a lot of propaganda came in. And for Monte Cassino, especially with other units involved, or like the Panzergrenadiere, which were, are often forgotten in the portrayal. So, well, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you to my supporters for making trips like this possible. As always, source the li list in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye. Bye.